Hey everyone. Um, sorry I had to cancel class this week, but mom's surgeon wanted to see her post-op tomorrow. And there was no way around it. He's only in the office in the morning. So um, I had to cancel class, but I didn't want to leave you guys hanging either and have to wait another whole week to finish this painting. So if you're game and you would like to finish up the egret, then let's do this together. Um, I'll demo it in several pieces in this video and put it together for you and I'll have it Well, obviously by the time you're watching this it'll be posted. So that's not what it's really saying uh, so let's look at The finished version from my Tuesday group Okay, and you know who I am I can turn that off. Okay, so um, I'm gonna switch over for a second this right now is the um, the finished version that was done in the Tuesday Intermediate class, um, as you can see, it's basically a graded wash from the top down to the bottom. In this case, it's, it's a bluish. And then towards, if you flip it over, it's a graded wash going towards the middle that's a, a little bit more blue-gray and it's a little bit darker. In the middle, it kind of meets, kind of softly. Um, it's kind of a mixed color in there. What I wanted was something to just give a stage for the egret to pop off of. So here's where my demo is with you guys. Uh, and this is what I'll be working on. So after I got it home and it dried and it faded some... I decided that I needed to darken the background and the water. Um, so I did that off camera. Um, it's exactly how you did the first part. Um, simply, it's a, a kind of dirty color. So in the top half, I have it warmer than in the one I did in the other class. And it's a bluish color. Uh, ultramarine plus a little bit of orange just a little bit to tame it um, in the bottom um, this really sets the bird off he really pops off of the page um, what we are going to be doing next is a lot like this one we're gonna treat the grasses and I'm gonna show you how to do that um, and then we'll put the ripples in um, and then we'll start working on the bird and the shadow of the bird and last will be the the little ripples in the water uh, but what you need to know about the Putting the grasses in they're done in two parts The soft melty part in the background is done first I'll wet the paper with pure water. I'm gonna let it dry quite a bit and then come in with paint and dab it in in that background and let it let it spread out and be soft and be light. And then when that's dry, I'll come back and we'll make the calligraphic marks that are the grass that I use basically mostly a, a script liner or a rigger, very thin brush, good at making uh, the rigging on ships and good for lines and lettering. Um, let's see if I have one at my disposal. Yes. So, can't see here. This is the, the rigger that I like to use. It's got about a half inch long um, belly of hairs and it comes to a point and it's really good for putting in these, these grasses because you, you want them to be sharp to offset against that really soft um, grass shapes that are behind it. It's kind of an illusion. Um, so let me turn me off. You don't need to see me anymore. Let's go back to our painting. So I'm going to grab, in this case, a number 14 round, one of my rosemary brushes. Make sure it's nice and clean. Okay. And I'm going to wet the background 
you see this. Okay, yes, you can see this. I'm gonna come in with my brush. I'm not gonna be perfect about it, but I want this to get pretty good and wet. Doesn't have to go all the way to the top. You want some places where it'll have a, a hard edge, anything like that. I'll do the other side now. Now, when I, when I darken the background off camera from you guys, I let that dry completely before I put the camera on and started talking to you. So if you're gonna take the chance to darken your background, if you think it needs it, um, then do it and either dry it with a hair dryer or wait for it to dry completely. Now I don't want this color in the background to be too much of any one thing. So I've got a little bit of a transparent yellow and orange mixed up and I'm just kind of swatting it in here. I'm gonna wet my brush some more. I'm gonna pick up some green here too. You don't want it to be all one color. You want to keep it soft. You're just trying to make, I don't know what to call it, maybe the, the essence. Yeah, let's call it that, the essence of the grasses in the background. So going right into that wet paper Um, looking at this, it comes down around the bird a little bit. These sharp grasses will come out of it. Um, see how much this side has already faded? I'm gonna put some, some more tone in there. Don't be afraid to go outside the line of where you've drawn the grasses. That's okay too. And get some of this greeny color in here. I want to mix up the color. If it's gonna get a little bit darker, get it where it is towards the bottom of the grasses, like between the, the grasses and the reflection. And just dot in a little bit, brush in a little bit on the wet. Um, I'm gonna put a little bit more water back up here behind my egret and I'm gonna drop in some more color. It's not gonna be specific here. It won't have a whole lot of grasses going in it, but just to give it some of that shape and to kind of frame around the egret, okay? That is probably plenty where it is pulled up at the bottom, where the bead is that I normally like to use, I'm simply going to blot away the bead and let this dry. This will be the stage that we set our grasses on. So I'm gonna stop the camera here. I'll come back when this is dry and we'll, we'll add some grasses. It'll be the same colors, so it's gonna be a yellowy and orangey and the sap green color, but it'll be thicker, it'll be heavier, and it'll go on with a very thin brush. We'll be using that that rigor liner brush that we talked about. In this case, it's a, it's a web liner, and it's synthetic. Again, all of my brushes are synthetic. So we're gonna let this go for a little bit, and when it's dry, I'll come back and we'll record the rest of this. So see you on the other side.
Okay, folks, we are back and ready to start working on our egret again. Um, as you can see, this is really nice and soft. I dried it with the dryer after I was done getting it on there. Next, we're going to use the liner brush to paint on just a few um, blades of grass. If you look in the original, there's maybe three over here, four or five over here, a couple reflections. That coupled with that soft amorphous shape behind it works just fine. So we're going to do that. I'm going to paint in my reflection lines. Where am I? Let me. Okay. I'm going to paint in the reflection lines. In this version, after looking at the last version, I've decided to make them run this way rather than they go the other way in the original painting. Um, so we're going to do our grasses. We're going to paint in our little bits of ripples around the, the legs and the beak. And we're going to paint in these ripples in the water. And that's as far as we're going to take it for today. Getting in the background and getting these elements in will be plenty of painting for you guys. And then in the next day or so, I will post a second video where we completely finish the egret. Um, so let me mix up. I am using my QOR paints again. Um, that's the ones made by the folks that make golden acrylics. So for this, I'm grabbing, get down to the orange. All right, I've got an orangey color. I've got a green, some sap green. I'm also going to take some, something earthy. Looks like a burnt sienna. Um, and they're all on the, they're still on the thin side in that you can still read through them, but they're stronger than what I used for the soft background. They're on top of it. They're darker, they're richer. So I'm going to pick up some color in my brush and I put in some initial pencil lines. So I'm going to basically, you know, follow them more or less. The grasses are definitely thicker down at the bottom. Here I'm going to throw in a reflection of that top one. And you can add another natural color. I'm adding some green into this brown grassy stuff. And I'll flick another one up in here. Now one of the things that's good to do is to um, keep the brush loose in your hand and work from the back. Don't, don't hold it like a pencil. You'll choke it and it'll show. It'll have a, a feeling of tension in it. Um, you want this to feel like, just like what they are, organic grasses. None of them should be too straight. They shouldn't go too straight up and down. Maybe bunched up a little bit more at the bottom. You can always wet your brush a little bit and come in and make a shape and be ready with your paper towel to take some of it out. Something that, you know, connects the grasses together. And I'm just kind of wiggling around this liner brush to make these shapes. It's amazing how much you can get away with to make these things look like grass without actually having to paint a whole field of grass. You can get these, this feel and these textures. Now I'm using these to a purpose too. 
They're kind of purpose built. I'm arching them. They're bend basically over the bird. I'm building a little frame for him. Um, I do like what happened here with this. I'm going to put some more just little indications, some grass that's not as high. This is very calligraphic and squiggly. It's actually a lot of fun to make. Let yourself be a little free with this. This is quite fun. Give yourself a couple of reflections. That's probably all I have to do. Um, you, know, you know me, I said, oh, I'm done. That's all I have to do. And then I see something I want to do. Um, I call that the nature of watercolor, but that might be the nature of Carl. But I'm going to come in with a little bit more dark. And just drop it into here at that base where it's kind of wet. You know, if you feel like you put too much down, just blot a little bit out irregularly. That's a little bit too blue for my taste, so I'm going to grab some of that rusty color and just add to it. You can take some of it out. The, the liner is also a great brush for Doing a little flicking, which I think adds interest to that grassy stuff. Just be careful not to flick too much onto your bird or any onto your onto your egret if you can help it. You can pat some of it out. Go back and do some of it again. Get a little water in your brush. That'll make bigger droplets. And then look at it and decide if you want to keep all of it or blot a little bit of it out. And if you do the water drops first, then go back in and get some color in your brush. You'll get softer droplets or a mix of hard and soft. The key is not to do too much. And I should have probably taped that off to keep it out of areas I didn't want it. But sometimes you get into what you're doing. You just have to be a little careful. Ain't no big thing. Just add a just a little bit more darker so that it looks like there's some more in front. There we go. So I think that's plenty for the grasses. It and that that lose some of the edges on these, so start one. And then stop it and start it again. That often looks interesting. You know, I'm, I'm playing here. And you don't want it to look too regular. I think that's where we fall into a trap sometimes. If you need to break some of it up, just hit it with a little bit of water. But I think that's okay. Then I'm going to make my, I've already drawn the ripples in around the beak so I know where I want them to be. And they're like elongated C's. They just kind of come out, they arc. You don't want to do too many of them. That makes a little bit, a little bit of frantic activity. I noticed that I had the ones for the feet a little bit lower, so I moved them up just a tiny bit so that they were closer in line with the beak because the water line is the water line for this. You know, it's 
they're basically coming in at the same point. The key is to not do too much with it, not to stress too much about it. Now what I'm going to do is switch away from the liner to hmm, to number four or number six. The numbers gotten washed off a little bit, so I'm mixing up a blue, some ultramarine blue, and I'm taming it a little bit with some sap green and a tiny bit of orange so it's not totally pure. I'm going to take a little bit out of, out of my brush on my towel and then this is should be working further back. I decided that the lines going in this direction was a little bit more organic and it helps also to frame in my egret in the same way that the grasses do. Um, this is something that less is more. You don't want to do too much of it. I may have done too much. I haven't decided, but I can also wet some of it and tap it out a bit come in and break some of it up doesn't have to all be perfect there we go so now we've got basically the entire stage set for us to paint the bird our little egret friend Okay, so this all kind of fades right into the middle, but it's got some dirty color in it, um, which is part of that warm at the top and the blue that it's at the bottom. And look at how much that bird shines already. We're going to be able to do a lot without having to do too much painting of the bird. We'll do, we'll get the eye and the, the beak and the legs in. And then we'll put the shadow underneath and we'll, we'll do little bits for the feathers, tone it down just a little bit. But even though he's the star of the painting, we're going to let him breathe and let a lot of the white of the paper come through. Um, so go ahead and get to this point if you are playing along. And then tomorrow I will add, um, we'll start working on the bird. We'll start working on our egret and finish this off. Um, for the next part, what you would need is mixed up a warm color, so a yellow, a gray that we're going to use for the egret. Um, so that can be ultramarine blue with some of the orange from the beak mixed in to make this a lighter version of it for the body and for under here. It's going to be warmer on this side. We'll put a light yellow or golden color in here and anywhere that we have highlights and then let the darker darker bits get cooler with blue. So we're playing with those um, complements again. So good luck. I can't wait to see where you guys get and uh, we'll pick this up in the next day or so. All right, good luck everybody.